So if you think about my book, Thriving Midlife has a demographic, um, specific demographic that it's talking to. And that demographic <laughs> likes to read this. Anyway, look, they, they, they got me in. One day I got an email after I... Hey, another tip for you, if you want to write something down, if you want to get some free publicity, sign up to a service called sourcebottle.com. S-O-U-R-C-E bottle.com. And then in your inbox twice a day, as regular as clockwork, twice a day you'll get an email that has a whole lot of jobs that you know um, journalists are needing someone to talk about. In this case, their experience of menopause. So I answer back to that journalist. You don't know who the journalist is at the time, but you know you, you know it's a, an Australian magazine. I get back to the journalist and I say, oh, I've just written a book called Thriving Midlife. I'd love to talk to you about my experience of, um, of, of menopause. And three days later, I got an email in my inbox and I thought it was you know, some kind of a spammy thing at first, and it said, um, sorry about the short notice, but would you be available for a photo shoot and an interview on, and it was the following Tuesday, for, and signed off, Claire Weaver, Senior Journalist, Australian Women's Weekly. Mm -hmm. and I, as a matter of fact, didn't make myself available. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, and I know some people can't even see this, but can anybody recognise that woman? No? She's, um, she was a comedian. She probably still oh, is. Jean Kitson. Jean Kitson. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, Jean Kitson. Yeah. She was part of a comedy company. That one of uh, Wendy Harmer's cronies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, that poor bloody woman. She'd been building her profile for decades. <laughs> she gets that much. I got that much. <laughs> That's not fair, is it? But I mean, she'd written a book on menopause and she had used hormone replacement therapy. I'd written a book on menopause and I hadn't because of my mum's experience. Um, so there you go. And again, and this is what I help my, my clients with because you write the book and depending, if the book is about building your business or if the book is about having a bigger impact in the world and maybe talking at the Women's Economic Forum or something like that, then this stuff is very, very helpful. So it's not just about writing the book. You write the book, you leverage the book, and you get yourself known well enough so that you're invited to whatever the forum is where you're going to be able to have maximum impact. First, something we've all experienced, and every time it happens, we're reminded again how not fun it is to be rejected. Some of the world's most successful people have been rejected. Elvis Presley was told to go away and learn to drive a truck. J.K. Rowling had 12 publishers reject her with Harry Potter. And Oprah Winfrey was told that she's too emotionally connected to her stories to be a journalist. All rejected, and aren't we glad that they were? One lady who'd had her life flipped on its head at the age of 52 is Jane Turner. Jane was retrenched from her job, where she thought she was safe for life. I was in the public service my whole life, so I'm a person with a high value on security. Gone. What happens to you when it's gone? Immense fear. Mm. immense fear because I'd been in that place for 15 years. Mm. It was like family, it was like home and the rejection buttons were being triggered all over the place. Once I picked my heart off the ground and put it back in my chest, I just thought, enough, I can't take this anymore. I'm just going to find what I can do, leverage that to build a business and see what, what happens. And what happened was this. Jane is now a sought-after corporate speaker and business consultant, and as the author of two very popular books on how to overcome adversity, she has never been busier or happier. The big one for me was that I wound up on a stage speaking at the Women's Economic Forum in India, mm. a forum that has some 2,000 delegates going to it, and there's little old Jane Turner, who'd been a public servant their whole life up to the age of 52, who would still be a public servant now. But would I be as alive now? Mm. Absolutely not, Joe. What an amazing 
amazing story of how wonderful life can be on the other side. <laughs>